Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today, this is video four in Michael's Room series. Video one, we did uh, front wall and primary reflections. Video two, we did side walls. And video three, we did rear wall. This is video four, and this is one of our favorite uh, videos because we talk about subwoofers. Everybody wants to know about subwoofers. Well, we can see that Michael started out with the traditional setup for subwoofers. He had it against the wall. In this particular room, he had it against the front wall. And I spent some time listening to it. And the first thing I hear always is that interaction between the speaker and the wall, especially a subwoofer. So there was no definition. There was no separation. There was no attack and decay. Uh, notes couldn't really live and die on their own volition, as we like to say. And we've got a pretty good sized room here. So right away, I knew we had to move the subwoofer. So what do we do? Well, it just so happens, I ran a few numbers and, and looked at the room and everything. And we decided to start with a position right next to the couch, which was great because that's a perfect place you can set drinks on and food and anything else that you do in, in your theater rooms. So you can see here what we did, we moved the subwoofer to next to the couch. And then the subwoofer platforms that we design are usually 12 inches high, but this time I went and split the design. So we have a six inch and a six inch piece approximately. And one goes on the bottom and one goes on the top. And this gives us a height that's uh, equal to the couch and the two chairs that Michael has in his theater room. So uh, more of convenience uh, for the, the room and everything, since uh, we've been spending a lot of time in here, convenience obviously is a, is a good uh, variable to uh, work with. But let's talk a little bit about kind of the before and after. Maybe remember what it sounded like against the wall? Yeah, um, I had the typical setup that you actually see in the diagrams when you buy surround sound equipment or even multi-channel SACDs that show you that the subwoofer is positioned somewhere between the left channel speaker and your TV and your gear rack and the center channel. And um, that's how I always had it. Um, it sounded fine to me. Um, I never thought about putting the subwoofer anywhere else. So when Dennis decided to move it next to the chair, I was wondering, is this going to sound good being right next to me? Isn't it supposed to come at me? That's what I used to think. And um, lo and behold, the sound, it makes a difference like night and day. Um, instead of the low frequency hitting the wall and being stuck in that corner, it now fills the room. The entire low frequency energy is right in front of me, right with the, with the rest of the music where it's supposed to be. And it sounds warm, it sounds musical, and it's, it has power. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It does have a lot of power. That power comes from definition. You know, if you can hear more, uh, that kind of equates to uh, power and uh, the beautiful thing about it, what Michael said, is it fills the room. But it doesn't like fill from the back or the sides or anything like that. And, and that's what low frequency energy does. No matter where in the room, if you get it positioned correctly, it'll sound like it's coming from the front of the room. So it won't be like behind you. Or, you can't localize low frequency pressure like that because it's pressure. So the goal is to marry the subwoofer to the room, not to the gear. That's what a lot of people do, and that's what Michael did initially because obviously he didn't know any different. But now he does. He would never go back to that particular situation right now. So we want to match the subwoofer to the room, and by doing that, then when the subwoofer fires during a, an audio passage, um, we get the room and the subwoofer working together. Not, not the speakers in the subwoofer necessarily. That's a speed issue. That's a little bit different uh, in the time domain. So what I really notice is that every note you hear, every note you hear the beginning of, every note you hear the middle of, and every note you hear the end of. And the beautiful thing about it is when that note ends and the other one begins, there's 
there's air, there's space, there's darkness between the notes. It's musical now. It's not just energy. It's not so, it's not just I think Dennis likes to call it mud and soup in his videos. That's what it was before. It was mud and soup and now the low frequency energy is right there in front with the music and it's part of the music. It is wonderful. Integration is the key here. That's what we're trying to do and a lot of people get mixed up on that. They think integration means integrating with the speakers. No, the subwoofer has to integrate with the room. Because remember, the subwoofer is producing energy that doesn't fit in any room unless you've got dimensions that are 35, 40 feet in every direction. And who has that? Who has 40 foot ceilings? I don't, you know, but most, yeah. most people don't <laughs> either. So 40 foot lengths, I'm starting to see some of those lately. Uh, Widths, never. Heights, never. So the key is to get the subwoofer to the room, match that. Now, where will it end up finally in your room? Unknown, but I can give you some starting points and where to try. And a good exercise to go through, if you can do this, is put the subwoofer in the middle of the room. Move it a little bit right, a little bit left, and listen each time as you do this. Have an RTA going at the same time and watch the response as you move it. If the low end starts to come up, that's not a good place. If the low end in the RTA starts to come down, you're on the right track, and then you can fine tune it. This room just so happens to work with the subwoofer right next to the couch, which is ideal because with the subwoofer platform, we now have a place to put food and beverages. So it, it's a good balance in this room. And, after all the time you and I have been listening in this room, there's absolutely no way the subwoofer would ever go back against the wall. No, yeah, never. 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 never go back because once you hear the difference, you never go back. And the wife likes it too because she can put her martini glasses on. There you go. So we, we win uh, with the WAF factor also, but one subwoofer in a room is usually enough. I don't see any rooms uh, lately with your room forms that can handle multiple subs. Stay away from putting them in the corners. Stay away from this multiple sub idea of smoothing out frequency response because subwoofers at $1,000, $2,000 a pop, you need four of them to really have a 6, 7 dB impact on low frequency response. And it's still not as clean as one sub or subwoofer position correctly in the room. So this is our uh, fourth video on subwoofer and we'll continue with video number five addressing uh, a common mistake we see all the time in home theater setups, the center channel. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis so that'll help you. Thank you.